everybody and welcome back to the channel. If you're joining me at the time this video is dropping, then a Merry Christmas to you. I hope you're all having a fantastic Christmas holiday. If you're catching it a little bit later, well, I just hope you're having a nice day generally. Now, today I'm going to be continuing my Batman marathon. As all week, I drop videos looking at various Batman action figures that I've been slow to catch up with when it comes to reviews. And today I'm going to pick up where I left off yesterday, looking at the Batman, the animated series figures from McFarlane Toys. And today I'm going to be focusing on the Scarecrow and Mr. Freeze. Now the packaging for all of the figures in this wave is pretty much consistent, it's pretty much the same packaging for each release, so I'll just focus on this Scarecrow for today's video. Uh, as you can see, it is slightly wider than we're used to seeing with the DC Multiverse line from McFarlane Toys, and that's because there's slightly more accessories than we're used to seeing from that line, plus there is the Builder figure as well. And all in all, I have to say this is very attractive, it's very colourful, I like that there's a lot more colour here. Of course, behind the Scarecrow we can see the blue card inlay, now there's no decor here, but at least it is very vivid and bright and colourful. It really helps the, the red of the Scarecrow's costume in particular pop uh, in this packaging, which is great. And then, of course, we have the Batman the Animated Series logo at the bottom, which is just a fantastic looking logo. You can slap that on anything and it's always going to look good, isn't it? If we look at the side panel, we can see that they've got this fantastic image taking from the source material, the animated series, a portrait of the Scarecrow. Now, in yesterday's video, I waxed lyrical about how pleased I was with this approach. I'm just going to say, once again, I love this. I think this works really well. It looks tremendous when we put them all side by side on the shelf. It's really colourful, it's decorative, and I just think it makes it really visual and interesting. So, well done, McFarlane Toys. More of this in the future. The other thing you may notice here is that there is the DC Direct logo. It's actually bigger and it's above the McFarlane toys. I suspect this is because they've probably loaned out the, the moulds uh, to McFarlane toys to reproduce their very successful DC Collectibles line of Batman the Animated Series because these figures seem very, very similar. And then finally we have the reverse, the packaging, which focuses very much on the Builder figure character, which is the Condiment King, and I will be covering that in another video later this week. Uh, so obviously there is an image taken over here by that character, which is great, I think it looks colourful, it's just a shame that it actually isn't the Scarecrow, because I think it would have been nice to have each individual character up front and centre on the back of the packaging. Uh, you can see the individual characters in this wave at the bottom there, but obviously it's quite small. Putting my cards on the table, I have to be honest, the Scarecrow is the figure that I was most looking forward to out of this wave because, unfortunately, this is the one character I was not able to get my hands on in the fantastic DC Collectibles line first time round. Uh, so I was really glad to be able to finally plug that gap. And I have to say, for the most part, I'm really impressed with him. I do really like the sculpting. It looks very faithful to the art style of the animated series. It looks pretty faithful to what we see on screen. And I think they've done a nice job of just capturing the essence of the character, particularly in those eyes there. It looks very mean and nasty. And for the most part, the paint apps uh, are well applied. There's actually a little bit of a wash running through the hair, which is great. I also really love that hat as well, I've gotta be honest. Now the hat is fixed, I must uh, acknowledge that. You can't remove the hat, but it looks great. Why would you wanna remove it? Um, it looks fantastic. As you can see, they've definitely applied the cell shading. Um, now again, the fans are probably going to have mixed feelings on this. This wasn't something that was present on the DC Collectibles version, as I remember, um, but they've obviously opted for it here. Now for me, I happen to like cell shading, and I think for the most part it works well. And I think here is another good example of where it is uh, working quite nicely. The colours are very complementary. We have darker hues. That does create that shadow effect, and I think it works really, really strongly here. Uh, so I think this is looking great all round. Uh, very happy with the sculpt, very happy with the proportions and what paint apps we have. It just makes the figure feel a lot more solid and just more, a bit more interesting visually as well. So I think they've done a really good job of this. I should also point out that this figure has a slightly glossy feel to it. This is quite different to the DC Collectibles line, which were a lot more matte. Looking at the articulation, there is a ball joint at the top of the neck, allowing the head to spin from side to side. Now, there is some hindrance here due to the hair, which is a solid plastic, so it's not much give and take. He will bobble his head from side to side, but it's kind of hard to pose it in one position. He can nod his head down, but again, he can't really push it back. 
He's got ball joints in the shoulders, of course, so the arms will lift up and out. Uh, sadly, there's no bicep swivel. There is just a pin swivel, uh, a bit of a ball joint there at the elbow, which does look a bit unseemly, to be honest, but it does allow that lower forearm to spin all the way around and hinge to about 90 degrees. There's a pin swivel at the wrist, allowing that wrist to rotate all the way around, and of course it also hinges forwards and backwards as well, and pleasingly the cuffs of his, uh, of his shirt there do not get in the way of that, which is great. Now, there is a straight swivel at the waist, allowing the figure to move from side to side, but sadly there is no ball joint, so he can't move forwards or backwards. There's ball joints in the hips, allowing the legs to kick out to the side, and they can kick forwards and backwards a little bit. Not a huge range here, but they will kind of do it, and they kind of come out diagonally. Uh, there is a double joint at the knee, though, so that lower leg will kick all the way back there, which is great. And, of course, he has a pin swivel at the ankle, allowing that foot to rotate all around and hinge forwards and backwards. He does come with some fun accessories, again recycled from the DC Collectibles line. He comes with an extra pair of hands, an alternate head, and his scythe. I think this scythe is a really cool accessory, it's a really great prop, obviously it's so closely associated with his character and I'd be really gutted if he didn't come with it. So I think they've done a nice job realising this, it's a really good size and it's quite imposing when he does hold it in his hands and I think it's a really great accessory. Uh, the only thing that's a little bit odd about it is that his hands aren't really sculpted to grip it per se, it does have that rather big sticky out uh, <laughs> gripper, um, it kind of just slot into his hands and to be fair it does slot quite comfortably, like it doesn't, there's no risk of it falling out out of his grip um, but at the same time it doesn't look like he's properly grasping it which is uh, strange and unusual but hey overall this looks fantastic I'm really pleased with it likewise having this alternate head here is a really cool addition uh, I think this is uh, nice it's not very often that we get unmasked versions of villains so this is a, a pretty cool thought and again we can see the the shading here is very nicely done this is a great sculpt and it looks pretty fantastic so so I've no qualms giving this figure four stars I've knocked a star off because there's still issues with the balance of this figure part of this is to do with the animation style uh, they tend to have very small feet but quite top heavy bodies which doesn't work very easily in action figure form so i think toy companies are always going to struggle here but to be fair he has no problem standing freely uh, it's just when he comes to pose me can be a little bit delicate so that's something to be mindful of uh, but that's not why i've really removed a star i've moved the star mainly because i feel like this is all well and good. It's nice that they've got the cell shading there and they've used some different materials, but it would have been nice if they'd done something a little bit different, uh, maybe added something extra, maybe an extra accessory or something uh, to just shake this up a little bit, especially for people who maybe already purchased this figure first time around uh, as an incentive. And these figures are quite pricey. They come uh, they come in a lot higher than the average DC multiverse action figure. So I'm struggling to see why we're paying that extra money. Up next we have Mr. Freeze, and Mr. Freeze is probably one of my all-time favourite Batman villains. I really love this character from the animated show, uh, so I'm always keen to get my hands on him. Now, I did own this one from DC Collectibles, uh, and a lot of the frustrations that were present in that figure are definitely present here. In fact, I think things may be slightly worse. Um, so, let's look at the sculpt. I think the sculpting is fantastic. I have no issues here. This is very screen accurate. It's very faithful to my memories of uh, this particular character, and I think they've done a really nice job. I also really like how they've done the dome. This is removable, as we'll see a little bit later. And I just think the overall look and presentation is great. I really like the cell shading, as you know. <laughs> Some people may be turned off by this, but I think this works really well. I think Mr. Freeze is another good example of how cell shading can really enhance a figure. Um, the slightly glossy effect to the paint, I think, works well here on this particular character as well, particularly on his body. Again, some people may feel more strongly about the matte version. Um, I don't feel strongly either way when it comes to this. I think both versions are absolutely fine. I like both approaches uh, and I think the overall presentation is pretty solid uh, so I have no real complaints about the look uh, or feel or the paint or anything about this figure I think it looks great uh, at face value where I take issue is with the articulation. As you can see, you can pop off the helmet and of course you can spin his head around. There is a ball joint in the neck here, allowing the head to spin all the way around and he can lean it left and right a little bit uh, and he can even nod it a little bit as well, but it's not a huge amount as you can see. In fact, it's it's quite The troubles really begin with his arms. He does have a ball joint at the top of the shoulder there and there's plenty of room for maneuver, which is great. So of course he can lift them up, spin them around and he can spin his lower forearm as well um, but there is no articulation as far as I can tell in the elbow now there definitely was on the DC collectibles version because I had it and I remember that those tubes around the elbow are actually moved to accommodate it and they were soft here they're quite hard and there's no movement 
I'm also disappointed that there's no waist articulation, not even a swivel here, which is really sad to say that they didn't bother to include this. Now, he does have those hinge hips, which, uh, you know, aren't popular. <laughs> they don't always look great, but his legs will kick out to the side. They'll kind of kick forwards, and they'll even go back fractionally. He's only got the single joint at the knee, which, again, pretty disappointing. He has a swivel at the top of the boots, with leg can spin all the way around. And then he has this rather unfortunate hinge joint at the ankle, which is just, it's so long large and unruly so he can hinge his foot forwards and backwards but it's pretty ugly looking. Accessories wise, well he, he has quite a lot. He has an additional four pairs of hands which almost feels like overkill but hey I'm glad to have them and of course he has his freeze ray gun but again sadly no freeze effects or anything new here which would have been really nice and I think there was an opportunity to experiment and add something extra to this figure. So all in all I'm going to give this figure three stars. I think the overall look of the figure is great but he's very very limited in terms of what poses you can put him in so you're not going to get an awful lot out of this figure and I find it particularly galling that he can't bend his arms because as I said I know that my other version can. Um, so this is uh, really a point that he's always gonna have his arm out straight. For me, he's slightly better than the Robin because at least he looks great. I had issues with the cell shading with the Robin figure, which kind of ruined his visual <laughs> look. At least Mr. Freeze, you can put him on display and he's gonna look pretty solid. It's just gonna be quite limited what you can do with him. All in all then, I guess uh, a mixed bag here. I really like the uh, Scarecrow. I think they've done a great job with that figure. I like the look of Mr. Freeze, but you know, noted that there's some uh, limitations there. But all in all, a nice set. Interesting uh, two characters to start with. Um, some of the later releases actually in the original DC Collectibles line, so it's nice that they kind of started with these. Next up, we need to take a look at the Condiment King Builder figure, and I'll be dropping that video tomorrow. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a like and remember to subscribe as there'll be plenty more videos soon.